Welcome to my channel. I'm Scott, and in this video, I am going to walk you through the process of valuing Go Health stock by analyzing their financial statements and dissecting their financial ratios so we can determine if it's a buy or a sell. Go Health is a marketplace for Medicare plans, including Medicare Advantage, Medigap, and Medicare Part D. These are programs administered through private health insurance companies. It also operates an online health insurance marketplace offering individual health insurance and short-term health insurance. In the future, it plans to license its platform to other insurance providers. That is what the company originally did when it started out 20 years ago. Its original name was Norvax, and it created websites and lead management software for insurance brokers. In 2012, it became a government-approved exchange after a deal was signed into place by the Obama administration and the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. This would allow GoHealth to enroll people in the same plans and offer the same tax subsidies found on healthcare.gov. In 2016, after growth from the Affordable Care Act slowed and following the departure of President Obama, GoHealth turned its focus to Medicare. The total addressable market is $30 billion for Medicare Advantage and Medicare Supplement products a huge opportunity to tap into. Medicare enrollment is expected to grow significantly over the next 10 years, since 11,000 people turn 65 each day and become Medicare eligible. Medicare enrollment is expected to grow from 62 million people in 2020 to 80 million people in 2030. There are rumors President Biden may lower the Medicare age from 65 to 60. If that happens, this stock will go through the roof just on the news alone. In order to benefit from this, you have to own the stock beforehand. You cannot buy it after he says the age is being lowered to 60 because by then everything is priced in. The company is headquartered in Chicago, Illinois and was founded in 2001. It started trading last year and can be found on the NASDAQ. Let's get started with the model. This is a small cap company, 1.5 billion market cap. They're trading at 476 a share and they have 321 million shares outstanding. Let's look at the financials. The way you value a company is you estimate the free cash flows into the future and then you discount those numbers back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video and free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. So they do have negative free cash flow each year since they're investing back into their business, acquiring other companies and trying to grow their revenue. Net income is the profit or loss on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses. And that is positive in 2018, negative after that. Revenue is a sales for the company, and you can see that grows a ton from 226 million to 1 billion. The company IPO'd in 2020 because it's hard to IPO when you have such low revenue, like in 2018 and before. The reason their revenue went up so much after 2018 was because in 2019 they acquired another company. But before 2018, they didn't really have that much revenue to IPO because you need to have a certain amount of revenue to go public. You can see in 2001, they only had $20,000 of revenue. Three years later, they brought it up to $2 million. Then in 2008, they brought it up to $24 million. And then by 2015, they finally broke through $100 million. You could trade on the pink sheets if you have a low amount of revenue, but it's usually not worth it to trade on the pink sheets. It's usually worth it to trade on a major stock exchange like the NASDAQ or New York Stock Exchange. There's a lot of different requirements to be traded on the NASDAQ. They could have went public with 550 million market cap and 110 million of revenue. But I'm not sure if their market cap would have been that high when their revenue was 110 million. And there's lots of different ways to go public. We've looked at companies on this channel that traded on the NASDAQ that had no revenue. And the company was worth several billion dollars. That's pretty common with pharmaceutical companies because those companies can go 10 plus years without getting any revenue because in order for them to get revenue, they need to develop a vaccine or a drug for a formula to make a drug and that patent could be worth billions and billions of dollars. So that patent is on their balance sheet and that's one way to qualify on NASDAQ is to have a certain amount of assets or a high enough market cap and with that patent or maybe the potential for certain drugs to be developed the value of the company can be really high even before they get any revenue. This is the company's income statement. The top line is the revenue of the sales. So here's a breakdown of their revenue from 2020. A bulk of their revenue comes from Medicare Advantage. That $630 million is the commission this company received from selling those plans to patients. They also received $165 million of revenue from partner marketing and enrollment services. 
This is when the company provides leads to other insurance carriers and also does marketing services for them. So the more leads they provide to an insurance company, the more their commission is going to be. But providing leads is just one thing. You have to provide good leads. So the more good leads, the leads that turn into customers that buy insurance policies creates more commission for this company. Below revenue is the cost of revenue. Their main cost of revenue is payroll and the commissions paid to other companies. Revenue minus cost of revenue gives you your gross profit. And that was over 800 million in trailing 12 months. Then below that is operating expenses. Here's a breakdown of their 2020 operating expenses. Their big operating expenses are marketing and payroll. They also have 165 million in customer care and enrollment. These are the expenses the company has to pay during the enrollment process. They have 59 million of technology fees because their platform is pretty technologically advanced. So that's always going to be pretty high. And they do have a lot of intangible assets on their balance sheet. So they have 94 million of amortization. They also have a decent amount of debt on their balance sheet. So they pay 34 million of interest on their debt. The other expenses are expenses from their acquisitions. And they have negative net income in 2020 and the trailing 12 months positive in 2018. The reason their financials skipped 2019 is because in 2019, they acquired Centerbridge. The acquisition was for $831 million. And you'll see later, Centerbridge owns the most stock in this company. So I do have their 2019 numbers on my Excel spreadsheet. I manually pulled it from their 10K because it's two separate companies you had to combine. But Yahoo Finance was unable to pick up the information because I think they just pull certain fields from the 10K. And I guess since 2019 was broken up into two separate companies, it wasn't unable to pull that information. Let's look at their statement of cash flows. The top line is operating cash flow. That's how much cash the company loses or generates from its operational business. You can think of operating cash flow as net income converted to cash because net income is your accounting profit or loss. It's not actual cash. So they did generate a little operating cash flow in 2018, but negative after that. Since they just IPO'd in 2020, they seem to be trying to aggressively grow their business, acquiring other companies and investing into technology. So a lot of companies sacrifice profits and cash flow in the early years to become a bigger company in later years. And they spent 6 million in CapEx in 2018, 14 million in 2020. So they do have negative free cash flow every year. So to fund their operations, they IPO'd and generated over $860 million of cash. They also added over 100 million of debt in 2020. They did repurchase $100 million of capital in 2020. It appears the agreement was once the company completed the IPO, they would have to pay $100 million to this preferred equity holder. This is the equity section of their balance sheet. They raised half a billion dollars from issuing stock and they lost 33 million from running their business. Accumulated deficit is a sum of all your net incomes. If this was a positive number, it would say retain earnings. Since it's negative, it says accumulated deficit. Let's look at the capital structure. 471 million of equity, 419 million of debt. They're 53% equity, 47% debt. And their weighted average cost of capital is 8.33%. And that's a discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four. That's 3.3 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $2.3 billion. We divide that by 321 million shares. And we get a calculated stock price of 726. They're trading at 476. So they're trading at a 34% discount. It's a buy according to the model. Analysts are forecasting this company to grow their revenue 21%. So I grew their revenue for 2021, 21% more than 2020. And then I grew their revenue 21% into 2022, 23, and 24. That gives them 1.88 billion of revenue in 2024. The average company converts 10% of their revenue to free cash flow. That's how I got 188 million of free cash flow in 2024. And I gave them negative free cash flow before that because it seems like they're still investing a lot back into their business and they'll probably have negative free cash flow for a few years. Plus, it's more conservative that way than giving them positive free cash flow. Six analysts priced this stock, and the average price target was $11.80. This is where the stock has been trading since it IPO'd. So it's really struggled, the stock. It really took a big dip right here. And I'm not exactly sure why it's been struggling so much. I guess investors just aren't happy that they continuously have negative earnings. The stock is up the past week, but down the past 30 days, 90 days, and one year. Its industry and the market are up in those same time frames.
Analysts seem really bullish on this stock, projecting their earnings to grow 79%, their revenue to grow 21%. If you invested $10,000 into this company when they IPO'd, you'd be at $2,500 today. That's a 75% loss. If you did invest in this company way back then, you probably don't want to put any more money into them. But if you never invest in this company, this seems like a really good buying opportunity. If you do feel comfortable with the company's business model, of course. Centerbridge is the biggest shareholder at 35%. So when they acquired Centerbridge, it looks like they gave them a lot of stock. So if you acquire a company, you can either give them cash or stock. Say for instance, you wanted to acquire a company for $2 billion. That was their asking price. And when you acquired this company and absorbed them to your company, the new entity would be worth $10 billion. So you could give the investors of the company you're acquiring 20% of the new company. If they agreed with that, you can also give them 1 billion of the new company and a billion of cash. And you could just take the cash out of your bank account or you can raise debt and then take the cash from that debt raise and give it to them. Of course, the investors in the acquiring company have to agree to your terms. Harris Associates owns 11%, then River Road, Norwest, and T. Rowe Price. Let's look at their financial ratios. They have negative net income, so we can't look at the PE. When a company has negative net income, we look to the price to sales ratio because that can never be negative. They have a really good price to sales ratio of 1.5. So based on this, it does seem like the stock is undervalued. Generally, investors are okay with a company losing money as long as they're growing their revenue. If a company is losing money and their revenue is going down, that's not a good thing. And of course, if a company is losing money and growing revenue, that doesn't mean they'll be profitable in the future. So you as an investor have to try to gauge that. They have a good price to book of 3.2 but they do have over $1 billion of intangible assets on their balance sheet, so they have negative tangible book value. They have a high current ratio and a high quick ratio. They have over $100 million of cash on their balance sheet and $130 million of receivables. So the company does seem to have enough cash on their balance sheet to get through the next 12 months, but after that, they may need to do another equity raise or maybe even issue more debt. So to summarize, I have them trading at a 34% discount because anything can trade at a discount if it comes down low enough or it could trade at a premium if it goes high enough. That doesn't mean you should buy every stock that trades at a discount and not buy any stock that trades at a premium. There's other things involved, of course. But if you feel the market is pretty good at valuing stocks, this stock has come down so much, so maybe you should avoid it. Maybe the market is onto something. But if you feel the market is missing something and this stock has a lot of growth potential, then maybe there's an opportunity there. I can go either way on this company. And if you wanted me to make a bull case on this company, I can easily do it. And if you wanted me to make a bear case on this company, I can easily do that too. Pretty much any company, I can make a bull case or bear case. I listened to earnings calls a few quarters before the company filed bankruptcy. And management was so optimistic about the company. So no matter what, management is bullish on the company. And they could paint a picture where the company sounds great, no matter what the situation is. You have to try to navigate through that noise and try to really figure out the truth. I rank their free cash flow as 1 out of 10, their revenue 8 out of 10, and their ratio 6 out of 10. So let me know what you think. Give this video a like, subscribe, or comment below. Also, if you'd like to get a custom valuation or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking on the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.